let's now look at a different type of counter, a uh, one-hot counter. And let's do a three-bit example. So a one-hot counter um, is, is similar to the one-hot state encoding that we talked about, which is we're going to have a count where one bit will be asserted at any given time. So what's going to happen is for a three-bit counter, we're going to have 001, and then it'll go 010, and then it'll go 100, and then it will repeat. So that's the up version. Okay, so 001, 001. So notice that one, one bit is asserted at any given time. And you actually never have the code 000 in here. So it's three bits, uh, and that's the pattern one hot. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to design this. So we're going to use a similar approach to uh, designing or to the synthesis of this. So let's just walk through it from beginning to end. And let's go ahead and start by looking at the block diagram. Let's, uh, let's have an output that we call hot. So we're going to have three bits on hot. And we're also going to have no inputs on this. And what we'll do is once and whenever we clock this, it'll simply just walk through. OK, so that's the. That's the uh, block diagram, that's the word description, and let's go ahead and do the state diagram. Now this is a counter, so what we can do is we can put three states in our state diagram, each state producing, or each state responsible for producing the output code. So I'm going to call the three states hot, zero, hot, one, hot, two, and each of these states will produce a code, so or produce an output. So let's say in hot zero we'll put hot, the output, is 001. When I'm in hot 1, I'll, I'll say hot is 010. When I'm in hot 2, hot output will be 100. And all we do is just traverse around. So we have three states, and we're just traversing around, and it will produce this three-bit output. So if I look at the state transition table, it's pretty simple. I just list current state, next state, and the output, and I go hot 0, 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1, 2, and then put the next states that I'm going to, and then 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. One zero zero. So pretty simple. Now we go to the synthesis, and we want to do a. F we want to take advantage of the counter behavior by assigning the state codes to match the outputs. So we want to assign hot zero the code zero zero one. That's the state code we want to use, and we want to assign hot one the state code zero one zero, and hot two the state code is 100. That will allow us to do what we call state encoded outputs. So when I do that assignment, it looks like this. But notice that it, you know, we're going to use D, three D flip-flops for this because we need three, we need a D flip-flop for every bit within the state code. So it actually kind of looks like it's a larger circuit. But these turn out to be not bad when you look at the next state logic. So let's go ahead and we'll look at our state transition table now once we assign the state variable names. So we're going to call the state variables q2 cur now, q1 cur, and q0 cur. Notice we needed three bits. And then we're going to call the next state logic q2 next, q1 next, and q0 next. And then we just simply put in the state codes for hot 0, hot 1, and hot 2 for the current state, and also the next state. And then look at, now you can really see the power here. So the output hot, it matches the current state code. So that's going to allow us to simply use wires for our output logic. And we'll, we'll do that once we get there. But that's the state encoded output. Okay. Now look at this. We needed 3D flip-flops to hold these codes. So now the, st the, the question is, how do you create the next state logic? Well, what is the next state logic? The next state logic is Q2 next, Q1 next, and Q0 next. And what are the inputs to it? So I need to build a circuit here for Q2 next. And what are the inputs? The inputs are the current states. So we have three inputs. So it's a three input combination logic circuit for each of these. So I'm going to build three combination logic circuits that each take in three inputs. Notice that this table doesn't list out each and every uh, input code. That means that we're going to have a situation where we don't have the output specified for a bunch of different input codes, so we can either take advantage of that with don't cares or just drive them simply to a zero. So let's go ahead and look at, let's go directly into a K-map and look at how we're going to do this. So let's do the next state logic synthesis, and we got this. So for Q2 next, let's use don't cares. So we put in the three values that we did have. Notice that the, the inputs, it depends on their Q, Q2 cur, Q1 cur, Q0 cur. 
and we're going to use don't cares for all the other outputs, and that will simply synthesize to Q2 next is Q1 cur. So that's pretty simple, not even no logic necessary. It wasn't even an inverter. For Q1 next, the logic synthesized down to Q1 next being equal to Q0 cur, and then for Q0 next, we had Q0 next, and then we had Q2 cur. Okay, so pretty pretty simple next day logic. The output logic is even simpler because we use state encoded outputs. So we just tie the outputs directly to the current state nodes. And that's because we chose those state codes to be the outputs. And now let's take a look at what the logic diagram looks like. I drew the, the flip-flops a little bit different this time because if you notice, the D flip-flop for Q0 cur is going to be right here. And the next state logic for Q1 cur, or, or the one holding Q1, is nothing more than Q1 next is equal to Q0 cur. So if you, that comes from right here. So Q1 next is equal to Q0 cur. So I actually just had a wire there going from the Q output holding Q0, or bit 0, to the D input, to the D flip-flop holding bit 1. And then look at bit 2. The, the next state logic for Q2 is simply Q1 cur, so it's just simply a wire from this D flip-flop to that, and then the output, or the next state logic for the zero bit is simply Q2 cur, so that's that's the expression, so I just wrote a little, uh, did a little loop back. The outputs are simply coming off of the Q outputs of these D flip-flops, and I have a clock. So it's a very simple circuit. In fact, this is a very, it's a shift register where you're actually in a loop, so you have a one that is introduced into the circuit, and then you just clock it, and you can think about that one just going, oh, it's moved over here, then 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 it's moved over here, moved over here, and so it's basically a one, it's kind of a ring count, you can think of it as a ring counter. So as soon as that one gets in there, it never goes away. So that's the logic diagram, and it ends up, even though you had to use an extra flip-flop to hold the three bits, it actually uh, synthesizes into a small circuit because of the next state logic and the output logic. So that is a 3-bit, 1-hot up counter.